Drake Wing Gaming, a Soviet man on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings, Anna's Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> sure thing, Chief. Let's go then, shall we? It's not like we have a choice. We always have a choice, Keegan. Always. <clears throat> oh god, the grouch. That was quicker than I expected. I would have minded waiting out here a little longer. Greetings, Minister. Greetings. Shall we go inside for our official business? No, I've got everything I need right here. It gets so stuffy. It gets so stuffy inside on hot days. My assistant doesn't seem to mind, but I prefer the fresh air. I'd rather just stay right here unless you have any objections. <clears throat> I don't. I see. Well, I know I haven't exactly been up to date in regards to Reza's sudden disappearance, but to get the message today that he is a confirmed serial killer was quite shocking. Frankly, I am curious as to why the facts of this case have been withheld from me for so long. Simply because they weren't within your jurisdiction. The murders were strictly a police matter. Only with the amount of new evidence, namely the DNA and blood we found, and these three murders now being linked together into him did your ministry have to become involved. I see. So Reza's involvement is now undeniable. I'm afraid so, Minister. <clears throat> Facts are nothing to be afraid of, though in light of all this, I'm starting to worry about my personal safety. With our thick hide, with, your, with our thick eyes, I don't think our species has much to fear if we consider the murder weapon. Speak for yourself. You don't think someone of my standing needs protection? Oh, for sure. If you're worried about your personal safety, we could look into an escort for you. Good. Considering all the murders took place during the night, I'll certainly need it. Long days are endemics in my, in my line of work. But that's enough about myself. We now face the question of what, what should be done about Reza and Keegan. Minister, we continue our hunt for Reza every day. As a matter of fact, Keegan has been helping us do so for a while now. Is that so? One human a murderer, another a detective. Interesting. And how do we know Keegan isn't following a similar plan to Reza's, whatever that may be? Similar concerns were leveled by Reza's escort, Maverick. It was his overreaction that caused Reza to run away in the first place. Let the human talk for once, Chief. Please, Keegan, enlighten me. You and Reza came here on the same mission, and the situation has escalated beyond our expectations. What you tell me now will determine the actions I'll take on this matter. Maybe you should start by telling me your side of the events from the beginning. Reza was fine during his early days here. Things only went wrong after you arrived. I opened my mouth at Bryce spoke first, determined to defend me. Arguably, the problems that caused all this were apparent even then. How so? Maverick suspected Reza of planning something, but I didn't think he had a case. Well, did he? <clears throat> no, what he had was, was, was a suspicion. The night he followed Reza, he found both him and Keegan at the portal. The humans intended to send one of their promised generators through, but there was a confrontation in with both Maverick and Keegan wounded, and Reza running away. Reza's been missing ever since. I've read the reports already, Chief. The question is, did Maverick cause this, or did he just fail to prevent it? I have no way of knowing that, Minister. You just mentioned your apparent knowledge of problems back then. Problems may not have been the right word. Let's just say Maverick's attitude was not helpful during that encounter. Why did you choose Maverick as his escort in the first place? Protection for the human ambassador is my greatest concern when I made that decision, and Maverick was the most capable individual in that regard. Well, that worked out nicely, didn't it? You also seem to think that Maverick shouldn't have remained Reza's escort. Is that true? Yes, and I paid more attention to the warning signs the situation may have been avoided. So you accept responsibility for the incident? <clears throat> yes, Minister. I see. Now, let us get back to the topic of Keegan. Reza was your partner in humanity's mission to come to this world. His list of criminal activities not only includes murder, but also theft of generators, electronic components, and the PDAs your people gave to us. <clears throat> One second, y'all. It is water time. <clears throat> Alrighty. Back to it. I understand why Bryce would reason that you could help the investigation, but we have no other choice but to be suspicious of Reza's partner. What was your motivation when you agreed to help us? I thought Reza's involvement was undeniable at this point. 
That may be true, but we still don't have the whole picture. We don't know if others are involved or his reasons. I just want to know why. I see. Well, after reading up on the whole situation, hearing both your accounts, I believe that Keegan is trustworthy. Nevertheless, I think Keegan presents a great risk. Why is that? After this meeting, I will hold a press conference to inform the public of the current situation. The people must know of the danger proposed by Reza. No matter what Bryce and I think about your involvement, the public could feel differently. You, me, and Bryce will have to face the backlash resulting from this information becoming public. And what's more, Keegan, you might be in real danger yourself. Reza himself may come to silence you once he learns that you are helping us, or consider the public uproar from those who would question your involvement. All things considered, it would be for, it would be for the best if you return to your own world until the situation has been resolved. I came, to, I came to the very same conclusion, Minister. Then, with your support, this is what shall be done. Please don't. You don't agree? If you send me back now, this diplomatic relationship is over. I'd have to admit to defeat to humanity. There's no way I can return without your generators, our PDAs, or Reza. Maybe you can explain to them what a great choice an ambassador Reza was. But I was his partner, so in a way he's my responsibility. I can't just go back like this. I'm afraid that's not enough. It certainly doesn't outweigh our reasons for sending you home. Just let me explain. I'll tell you everything. Years ago, our world was prosperous. Our technology was far more advanced than yours, even than yours even. Computers not only graced every household, but every single person. But every single person. It was the age of information. Even children had the power to access the most advanced knowledge at their fingertips. With our PDAs, our interconnectedness with other people and our environment was greater than ever. From locomotion to the repetitious work and household chores, many processes were automated to such a degree that, except for our jobs and hobbies, ooh, excuse me, there was nothing that needed to be done by a person anymore. Even the concept of someone wielding a weapon was outdated, as wars were no longer fought by people, but machines. Looking back, it was probably the single most prosperous time in human history. Exploitation of the environment and other people was at an all-time low, as was crime. Conversely, our technological advancements had drastically increased quality of life. Humans were no longer required for strenuous and repetitive tasks. Education had reached an all-time high, and many new jobs were created. General happiness had reached levels never before seen. Yet one day, everything changed. A solar flare that was headed for Earth was detected by an automated monitoring system. It was determined to be so powerful that it dwarfed all others ever recorded in history. We had less than a week to prepare. Chaos hit much earlier than that as people scrambled to shield themselves and their possessions from the incoming ion storm. On a worldwide level, power lines were switched off, satellites reoriented in space, and planes grounded to mitigate the effects that would hit us. Despite humanity's contingency plan for such an event and all of our efforts, we were still not prepared for the sheer magnitude of the solar flare that arrived. It was only then, when our race had become so dependent on technology, that we were immeasurably vulnerable against this kind of disaster. That day, a force with the power of 10 billion Hiroshima bombs was unleashed into our atmosphere. The eyewitness reports from this day were varied as they were terrifying. A huge, beautiful aurora could be seen on the horizon before fireballs hurled across the sky. Second you know, water time. In some places, these lights became so bright that even those asleep at night awoke as though day had already arrived. A coronal mass ejection by itself did not have the power to kill anyone directly, but the side effects were disastrous. After the lights in the sky arrived, sparks showered from electrical outlets everywhere, igniting rampant fires in every town and city. Facilities that stored weapons, fireworks, or other explosives became centers of widespread destruction and loss of life. During the next stage, the solar flare started to affect body modifications and cause commonplace pacemakers and animations machines to fail. 15% of the world's population died as a result of this alone. Once the full power of the waves hit us, however, society as we knew it collapsed in one fell swoop. Power grids on Earth shut down in an instant, as did all the machines that automated our routine tasks. Long-distance communication and transport became a thing of the past. Without electrical power, the quality of healthcare plummeted, and water and sewage systems were crippled. Diseases we thought defeated centuries ago made their comeback in a most unsightly fashion. Many thought the end of the world had arrived, in the way it had. Some people blamed whoever their belief system would allow, angry at the gods that had forsaken them. Others pointed their fingers at our lifestyle and society, not that anyone was listening. Practically, we were back in the Middle Ages. Governments collapsed and were overthrown, and the ensuing power vacuums filled with groups of people that were sometimes organized and sometimes not. 
The few functioning electronic devices left became rare, sought after artifacts over which battles and even wars were fought. Of course, there, was also, there were also wars over resources and territory. The weaponry used was improvised or reclaimed from the days when humans had been present on the battlefield. It had been ages, but people returned to the old bloody ways of war. Humanity is in shambles now. Those that I'd call family and friends now live with me in a giant, mostly self-sufficient city-state of survivors. A huge wall around the perimeter, guarded by militia, prevents any outside interference. It's the only way we can retain, we can retain a modicum of, of order. Gangs of raiders and looters run rampant on the outside. They wouldn't hesitate to kill first and ask questions later if they had known about my PDA. Our contained community has flourished for years now. We have homes to live in, crops to grow, and livestock to raise, and still have our own automated hospital that runs on salvage generators. Lately, those supplies have started to run low, and dangerously so. The power we have is running out. Illnesses are spreading throughout the city, and treatment isn't as available as it used to be. Our population is dropping by the day. We took a great risk to increase the radius of our scouting missions, desperate to find something outside the wall that could help us. You already know the rest of the story. We found the portal, and you. And now you know why this whole thing is so important to me. All our hopes lie in acquiring the generators you promised us. The act of sending Reza and me here has, without a doubt, already cost the lives of some people back home. Beyond the city walls is a dead zone. We haven't heard from any of their settlements for months now. The state of the rest of the world is unknown. When Reza and I were sent here, my peers made it clear that this was our last chance. If anything happens to us, no more people will be sent. If we can't manage to bring back something that will help, we'll have sealed the fate of the tens of thousands that live in our city. I'm sorry, Keegan, I didn't know. If what you are telling me is true, and unfortunately does not work in your favor. As sad as your situation may be, it gives Reza a motive. Desperate times call for desperate measures, after all. In that vein, it also gives you a motive. Considering the gravity of the human plight, it gives you all the more reason to collaborate with him. I'm not. What Reza's doing is wrong. You can't send me away under these circumstances because I'm your best bet at finding him. Even so, you would still be in grave danger after we announce Reza's involvement in the murders. I cannot and will not take responsibility for the consequences when I know of the risks. What about our deal, then? In the, wake of new, in the wake of this new information, as a sign of goodwill, we will send the generators you are owed through the portal once this is over. Under two conditions. Humanity must condemn, Rez or condemn Reza's actions, and we must reclaim the stolen PDAs. I've changed my mind. You should let Keegan stay here. I cannot take your word under consideration in this matter, Chief. Taking into account Maverick's actions and your responsibility for them, you will have to be dealt with separately. With my authority as the minister in charge of the human visit, my decision is to have Keegan sent back to the human world through the portal. Please. Immediately. Chief, please arrange for an escort to take Keegan to the portal now. Alright, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Actually, I'm going to... No, no, no. I'm going to pause it right there. I'm going to drink some water. Which I suppose is also pausing it. I can do it myself, Minister. Well, we have our own matters to discuss, Chief, and I would rather get that with him, over with as quickly as possible. In that case, one of my officers should be here any moment. I've arranged for him to meet us here. How handy. Then let us wait for this officer of yours. It didn't take long for Sebastian to arrive. After the situation was explained, he was visibly shocked, but didn't protest when he was given the task of sending me back through the portal. Let's go, Keegan! Don't I, even have to, don't I even get to say goodbye? Let us not waste any more time. You will still be free to send letters after you have arrived on the other side. Just go, Keegan. Well, come on, then. We were silent as Sebastian and I slowly made our way to the portal. With each step I took, I drew closer and closer to the hopelessness waiting for me in the ruins of the human world. All in all, I certainly had a unique experience alongside these dragons, and although this place was filled with just as much drama and murder as back home, I'd remember this world and all the people I met. I'd finally think back to the days I spent in their comfortable standard of living, a shadow of how humanity used to be. Even without the generators, at the very least I'd be returning home with a few life lessons. What's going on here? Lost in thought, I hadn't even noticed Aideen approaching. What's sort of your concern? Please leave! Can't I even get a few minutes before I go? I well, suppose nobody's stopping us, but make it quick. What's going on here? Something happened. Looks like I have to leave. Right now? Why? This wasn't my decision. You'll hear all about it soon enough. You could at least have called me or something. I only found out a few minutes ago. You didn't even call me back when I left you a message. Is that a normal thing humans do, not calling back? Aww. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!